the letter of columbus on the discovery of america by christopher columbus this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org the discovered islands letter of christopher columbus to whom our age owes much concerning the islands recently discovered in the indian sea for the search of which eight months before he was sent under the auspices and at the cost of the most invincible ferdinand king of spain addressed to the magnificent lord rafael sanchez treasurer of the same most illustrious king and which the noble and learned man leander de cosco has translated from the spanish language into latin on the third of the calends of may fourteen ninety three the first year of the pontificate of alexander the sixth because my undertakings have attained success i know that it will be pleasing to you these i have determined to relate so that you may be made acquainted with everything done and discovered in this our voyage on the thirty-third day after i departed from cadiz i came to the indian sea where i found many islands inhabited by men without number of all which i took possession for our most fortunate king with proclaiming heralds and flying standards no one objecting to the first of these i gave the name of the blessed saviour on whose aid relying i had reached this as well as the other islands but the indians call it guanahani i also called each one of the others by a new name for i ordered one island to be called santa maria of the conception another ferdinanda another isabella another juana and so on with the rest as soon as we had arrived at that island which i have just now said was called juana i proceeded along its coast towards the west for some distance i found it so large and without perceptible end that i believed it to be not an island but the continental country of cathay seeing however no towns or cities situated on the sea-coast but only some villages and rude farms with whose inhabitants i was unable to converse because as soon as they saw us they took flight i proceeded farther thinking that i would discover some city or large residences at length perceiving that we had gone far enough that nothing new appeared and that this way was leading us to the north which i wished to avoid because it was winter on the land and it was my intention to go to the south moreover the winds were becoming violent i therefore determined that no other plans were practicable and so going back i returned to a certain bay that i had noticed from which i sent two of our men to the land that they might find out whether there was a king in this country or any cities these men travelled for three days and they found people and houses without number but they were small and without any government therefore they returned now in the meantime i had learned from certain indians whom i had seized there that this country was indeed an island and therefore i proceeded towards the east keeping all the time near the coast for three hundred twenty two miles to the extreme ends of this island from this place i saw another island to the east distant from this juana fifty four miles which i called forthwith hispania and i sailed to it and i steered along the northern coast as at juana towards the east five hundred sixty four miles and the said juana and the other islands there appear very fertile this island is surrounded by many very safe and wide harbours not excelled by any others that i have ever seen many great and salubrious rivers flow through it there are also many very high mountains there all these islands are very beautiful and distinguished by various qualities they are accessible and full of a great variety of trees stretching up to the stars the leaves of which i believe are never shed for i saw them as green and flourishing as they are usually in spain in the month of may some of them were blossoming some were bearing fruit some were in other conditions each one was thriving in its own way the nightingale and various other birds without number were singing in the month of november when i was exploring them 
there are besides in the said island juana seven or eight kinds of palm trees which far excel ours in height and beauty just as all the other trees herbs and fruits do there are also excellent pine trees vast plains and meadows a variety of birds a variety of honey and a variety of metals excepting iron in the one which was called hispania as we said above there are great and beautiful mountains vast fields groves fertile plains very suitable for planting and cultivating and for the building of houses the convenience of the harbours in this island and the remarkable number of rivers contributing to the healthfulness of men exceed belief unless one has seen them the trees pasturage and fruits of this island differ greatly from those of juana this hispania moreover abounds in different kinds of spices in gold and in metals on this island indeed and on all the others which i have seen and of which i have knowledge the inhabitants of both sexes go always naked just as they came into the world except some of the women who use a covering of a leaf or some foliage or a cotton cloth which they make themselves for that purpose all these people lack as i said above every kind of iron they are also without weapons which indeed are unknown nor are they competent to use them not on account of deformity of body for they are well formed but because they are timid and full of fear they carry for weapons however reeds baked in the sun on the lower ends of which they fasten some shafts of dry wood rubbed down to a point and indeed they do not venture to use these always for it frequently happened when i sent two or three of my men to some of the villages that they might speak with the natives a compact troop of the indians would march out and as soon as they saw our men approaching they would quickly take flight children being pushed aside by their fathers and fathers by their children and this was not because any hurt or injury had been inflicted on any one of them for to every one whom i visited and with whom i was able to converse i distributed whatever i had cloth and many other things no return being made to me but they are by nature fearful and timid yet when they perceive that they are safe putting aside all fear they are of simple manners and trustworthy and very liberal with everything they have refusing no one who asks for anything they may possess and even themselves inviting us to ask for things they show greater love for all others than for themselves they give valuable things for trifles being satisfied even with a very small return or with nothing however i forbade that things so small and of no value should be given to them such as pieces of plates dishes and glass likewise keys and shoe straps although if they were able to obtain these it seemed to them like getting the most beautiful jewels in the world it happened indeed that a certain sailor obtained in exchange for a shoe strap as much worth of gold as would equal three golden coins and likewise other things for articles of very little value especially for new silver coins and for some gold coins to obtain which they gave whatever the seller desired as for instance an ounce and a half and two ounces of gold or thirty and forty pounds of cotton with which they were already acquainted they also traded cotton and gold for pieces of bows bottles jugs and jars like persons without reason which i forbade because it was very wrong and i gave to them many beautiful and pleasing things that i had brought with me no value being taken in exchange in order that i might the more easily make them friendly to me that they might be made worshippers of christ and that they might be full of love towards our king queen and prince and the whole spanish nation also that they might be zealous to search out and collect and deliver to us those things of which they had plenty and which we greatly needed these people practice no kind of idolatry on the contrary they firmly believe that all strength and power and in fact all good things are in heaven and that i had come down from thence with these ships and sailors and in this belief i was received thereafter they had put aside fear nor are they slow or unskilled but of excellent and acute understanding and the men who have navigated that sea give an account of everything in an admirable manner but they never saw people clothed nor these kind of ships as soon as i reached that sea i seized by force several indians on the first island 
in order that they might learn from us and in like manner tell us about those things in these lands of which they themselves had knowledge and the plan succeeded for in a short time we understood them and they us sometimes by gestures and signs sometimes by words and it was a great advantage to us they are coming with me now yet always believing that i descended from heaven although they have been living with us for a long time and are living with us to-day and these men were the first who announced it wherever we landed continually proclaiming to the others in a loud voice come come and you will see the celestial people whereupon both women and men both children and adults both young men and old men laying aside the fear caused a little before visited us eagerly filling the road with a great crowd some bringing food and some drink with great love and extraordinary good will on every island there are many canoes of a single piece of wood and though narrow yet in length and shape similar to our rowboats but swifter in movement they steer only by oars some of these boats are large some small some of medium size yet they row many of the larger rowboats with eighteen cross benches with which they cross to all those islands which are innumerable and with these boats they perform their trading and carry on commerce among them i saw some of these rowboats or canoes which were carrying seventy and eighty rowers in all these islands there is no difference in the appearance of the people nor in the manners and language but all understand each other mutually a fact that is very important for the end which i suppose to be earnestly desired by our most illustrious king that is their conversion to the holy religion of christ to which in truth as far as i can perceive they are very ready and favorably inclined i said before how i proceeded along the island juana in a straight line from west to east three hundred twenty two miles according to which course and the length of the way i am able to say that this juana is larger than england and scotland together for besides the said three hundred twenty two thousand paces there are two more provinces in that part which lies towards the west which i did not visit one of these the indians call anan whose inhabitants are born with tails they extend to one hundred eighty miles in length as i have learned from those indians i have with me who are all acquainted with these islands but the circumference of hispania is greater than all spain from colonia to fontarabia this is easily proved because its fourth side which i myself passed along in a straight line from west to east extends five hundred forty miles this island is to be desired and is very desirable and not to be despised in which although as i have said i solemnly took possession of all the others for our most invincible king and their government is entirely committed to the said king yet i especially took possession of a certain large town in a very convenient location and adapted to all kinds of gain and commerce to which we give the name of our lord of the nativity and i commanded a fort to be built there forthwith which must be completed by this time in which i left as many men as seemed necessary with all kinds of arms and plenty of food for more than a year likewise one caravel and for the construction of others men skilled in this trade and in other professions and also the extraordinary goodwill and friendship of the king of this island toward us for those people are very amiable and kind to such a degree that the said king gloried in calling me his brother and if they should change their minds and should wish to hurt those who remained in the fort they would not be able because they lack weapons they go naked and are too cowardly for that reason those who hold the said fort are at least able to resist easily this whole island without any imminent danger to themselves so long as they do not transgress the regulations and command which we gave in all these islands as i have understood each man is content with only one wife except the princes or kings who are permitted to have twenty the women appear to work more than the men i was not able to find out surely whether they have individual property for i saw that one man had the duty of distributing to the others especially refreshments food and things of that kind 
I found no monstrosities among them, as very many supposed, but men of great reverence and friendly, nor are they black like the Ethiopians. They have straight hair hanging down. They do not remain where the solar rays send out the heat, for the strength of the sun is very great here, because it is distant from the equinoctial line, as it seems, only twenty-six degrees. On the tops of the mountains, too, the cold is severe, but the Indians, however, moderate it, partly by being accustomed to the place, and partly by the help of very hot victuals, of which they eat frequently and immoderately. And so I did not see any monstrosity, nor did I have knowledge of them anywhere, except a certain island named Charis, which is the second in passing from Hispania to India. This island is inhabited by a certain people, who are considered very warlike by their neighbors. These eat human flesh. The said people have many kinds of rowboats, in which they cross over to all the other Indian islands, and seize and carry away everything that they can. They differ in no way from the others, only that they wear long hair like the women. They use bows and darts made of reeds, with sharpened shafts fastened to the larger end, as we have described. On this account they are considered warlike, wherefore the other Indians are afflicted with continual fear, but I regard them as of no more account than the others. These are the people who visit certain women who alone inhabit the island Mateunin, which is the first in passing from Hispania to India. These women, moreover, perform no kind of work of their sex, for they use bows and darts, like those I have described of their husbands. They protect themselves with sheets of copper, of which there is great abundance among them. They tell me of another island greater than their force at Hispania, whose inhabitants are without hair, and which abounds in gold above all the others. I am bringing with me men of this island, and of the others that I have seen, who give proof of the things that I have described. Finally, that I may compress in few words the brief account of our departure and quick return, and the gain, I promise this, that if I am supported by our most invincible sovereigns with a little of their help, as much gold can be supplied as they will need, indeed as much of spices, of cotton, of chewing gum, which is only found in Chios, also as much of aloe's wood, and as many slaves for the navy as their majesties will wish to demand. Likewise rhubarb and other kinds of spices, which I suppose these men whom I left in the said fort have already found, and will continue to find, since I remained in no place longer than the winds forced me, except in the town of the nativity, while I provided for the building of the fort, and for the safety of all which things, although they are very great and remarkable, yet they would have been much greater if I had been aided by as many ships as the occasion required. Truly great and wonderful is this, and not corresponding to our merits, but to the holy Christian religion, and to the piety and religion of our sovereigns, because what the human understanding could not attain, that the divine will has granted to human efforts. For God is wont to listen to his servants who love his precepts, even in impossibilities, as has happened to us on the present occasion, who have attained that which hitherto mortal men have never reached. For if any one has written or said anything about these islands, it was all with obscurities and conjectures. No one claims that he had seen them, from which they seemed like fables. Therefore, let the king and queen, the princes and their most fortunate kingdoms, and all other countries of Christendom, give thanks to our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, who has bestowed upon us so great a victory and gift. Let religious processions be solemnized, let sacred festivals be given, let the churches be covered with festive garlands. Let Christ rejoice on earth, as he rejoices in heaven, when he foresees coming to salvation so many souls of people hitherto lost. Let us be glad also, as well on account of the exaltation of our faith, as on account of the increase of our temporal affairs, of which not only Spain, but universal Christendom will be partaker. These things that have been done are thus briefly related. Farewell. Lisbon the day before the Eads of March. Christopher Columbus, 
Admiral of the Ocean Fleet. Epigram of R. L. de Corbaria, Bishop of Monte Peloso, to the most invincible king of Spain. No region now can add to Spain's great deeds. To such men all the world is yet too small. An orient land found far beyond the waves will add great Betica to thy renown. Then to Columbus the true finder give due thanks, but greater still to God on high, who makes new kingdoms for himself and thee, both firm and pious let thy conduct be. End of The Letter of Columbus on the Discovery of America by Christopher Columbus Read by Avai in December 2009